Hello and welcome. This is the Raptor and Object Oriented Mode walkthrough. Uh, this is aimed at students at John F. Kennedy High School, but uh, anyone who is interested in learning more about Raptor or using Raptor in object oriented mode is welcome to watch this video. And or it was actually going to be a series, so. Uh, hopefully it will take some of the mystery out of it if you're new to programming. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. If you first download Raptor, it will look like this. You'll have these symbols to the left. You'll have uh, nothing essentially inside of your, uh, your main method here. But we're going to concentrate on using the object-oriented mode. Now the first well, there's really two differences that are uh, readily apparent is the UML tab and the existence of this return statement, which we'll get to at a later time. The UML tab is key here. Uh, this is where you'll actually create classes to actually use inside of uh, your Raptor application that you design. And that's essentially what this video is going to cover is creating a class um, creating a field for a class and instantiating that class in your main application now you see these class buttons you have add class you have an interface an enum uh, add a comment inherits from and all of this stuff has to do with inheritance and uh, we'll get to that stuff later when not just inheritance but polymorphism and again we'll get to that stuff later all right so to create a new class you simply click the new class button the classes that are created inside of Raptor default to being named new class now if you try to set the name and access and modifiers of your classes you'll notice that you can't click anything. Well, that's because you don't have an any class focused. So you have to create the class first, then select it, or focus it, and then you'll be able to make changes. Yeah, go away. All right, so just like we did in class, we're going to create this soccer player class. Make sure that the access is public. The modifier will be none. We'll get to this stuff later. Alright, basics first. Alright, so we have the soccer player class. To make changes to its members, we simply double click and this dialog conveniently uh, labeled members of soccer player will come up. Now you'll have all of these things that you can change or add as part of this class and remember that members are properties or fields or methods and even the constructor that belong to a class and to create these things other than properties which this is kind of a special uh, field which we'll get to that later we have these buttons we have a constructor a method or a field now the constructor is simply the the main method of a class. So whenever you actually instantiate a an instance of a class, the constructor gets called automatically. Now classes and you know by proxy instances don't necessarily have to have constructors. It's not a requirement. Um, you can, and I'll, let's say that you're going to inside of your, f well, let's create a field first. So we create a field, the blue button. And remember that fields are essentially variables that exist inside of a class, essentially. We have our type, our access modifier, and we have, or you could think of access as, as the scope of the field, 
Uh, what can see it, what can't see it, what can modify it, what can't modify it. Alright, the name of the class, or sorry, the field. We're going to call this number, and this will represent the jersey number of a soccer player. We're going to change our access to public. Now normally this, I mean this defaults to private, uh, because you, you generally want to follow encapsulation. You don't want to really have fields being accessed uh, by different uh, instances and you know having other objects to be able to alter the fields of this object. You want to set it up actually to where this object or this instance of this class takes care of these things itself. Okay, and uh, there there are lots of reasons behind it, but just know that that's one of the the most important things with object-oriented programming is ensuring that uh, outside influences can maybe can read information, but you don't necessarily want them to be able to alter it. And that's where properties come in, and we'll look at that later. But for right now, let's just make this public. Okay. So we're just playing around with it, we're learning, so uh, the type, we're going to leave it an integer, and a quirk about Raptor, which makes sense, is until you use a type inside of here, or inside of one of these, it, it won't be available as far as in the drop-down. Alright, so, you know, I can type in string, but string is not in the drop-down. But once I use it, now it's in the drop-down. Remember that uh, any class that you create can be a type. Okay. And that, all right, that's fine. All right, so I'll close this. So the only behavior that I have on this class is simply a field to hold some data. And if we look at our main inside of our application and we hit play, we can notice that nothing happens. There's no output. Uh, there's no variables created. Nothing happens. No instances exist. No fields inside of those instances. And the reason is, yes, we've designed what we want this soccer player to be able to do. Well, actually we haven't, but we've created this class. But the problem is that this class exists outside of uh, the main method until you actually instantiate it inside of your application. So remember that an instance essentially is a variable th that holds a class of a type. All right. Now it's, it's more complicated than that, but for the purposes of just learning this, uh, just leave it at that. So we'll call this instance player A. So we're going to create or set the variable player A equal to a new soccer player. Now we haven't used these yet, your parentheses, but they will become important later. So go ahead and get used to actually typing them now. Alright, so you can go ahead and click done. And there we go. We say we see that we're going to create a variable called player A. It's going to be equal to a new soccer player. So this variable is actually an instance. Okay? It's a variable that holds a class. Okay, so it's an instance. Okay. So now if we hit play, we can see over here that we have created a soccer player. Its mem ID is this number, and it has a field of zero, or a field called number, and it's and it's holding the data zero. All right, so we could easily, because number, because this field is public, inside of this main method, we could very simply. I don't care what the name of it is, go away. We could quite simply, after we instantiate it, 
and that's key after we instantiate it because if we did this before if we tried to say okay on player a I want to grab the number field and I want to output that we can do this and this will output it to the master console so we say play all right, and we see that the zero that's contained inside of the soccer player is output to the master console. If we were to move this before, it's going to come back with an error. Player A is not found because player A, his number, doesn't exist yet. It only exists here. So we have to actually create the instance before we can access any information on them, which, you know, makes sense. So yeah, we can output that information. We can set that information, again, because it's public as well. So we can go in and say, hey, player A, that field that you have called number, I want to change it to 20. And now when we press play, we can see that 20 is actually the value that the number field now holds. Now, let's say that we want to create not one, but two instances of soccer player. Player A and player B. Now, if we hit play now, two instances of this class are created, each with its own field. So this one is player A and this one's player B. And the only reason I can tell that is because of I know that player A's number is going to end up being 20 and player B remains zero. So to change this other field on player B, it's very simple. We do exactly the same thing. We're going to access the player B, his number field, and we're going to set it equal to 45. Now if we play if we run the program, we can see that one is of these are 20 and one of them are 45. Now you can output these individually. As I could say output player B dot number if I wanted to. But you can also just do operations with these as well. So I'm going to output player player A's number multiplied by player B's number. And let's say I'm going to take whatever that is and multiply it by 2. So we'll take 20, multiply it by 45, and multiply that by 2. So it will go inside player A, get whatever value is inside of the number field, multiply it by, okay, well, go into the player B instance, get its number field, Okay, multiply those together and multiply that by 2 and output the uh, answer that you get, which we get 18,000. Okay, so that's how we design a class as far as just the fields. Uh, the next time we'll look at constructors and methods uh, inside of a class and how to use the, uh, the methods and set up the information inside of a constructor for instances. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a great day.